Hi, today I will talk about thematic analysis of qualitative data, the principles. Many people say that they collect qualitative data and they will analyze it, but they are not sure how to do it. Thematic analysis is a simple yet workable way when done correctly, which is why it is important to know the principles of thematic analysis. After this session today, you will be able to know what thematic analysis is, explain the four phases of thematic analysis, as well as differentiate between the two orientations in thematic analysis. Put very simply, thematic analysis is a technique for analyzing qualitative data, and it can address lots of research questions. It can analyze a variety of texts, such as interview, transcripts, newspaper articles, and speeches. Researchers use thematic analysis because they are interested in the rich data that comes to them. So they could be interested in people's experiences, views, or perceptions. For example, what do people think of women who play traditionally male sports? Researchers who use thematic analysis are also interested in understanding and representation of the participants' perspective such as when they analyze interview transcripts or when they analyze magazines and newspaper articles. An example is this, how are food and eating represented in popular magazines targeted at teenage girls? The ultimate purpose of doing thematic analysis is to identify patterns of meaning in the qualitative data. And this comes from analysis of themes that emerge from the text analysis. So the thematic analysis goes through rigorous process of a few phases, starting with data familiarization, data coding, and theme development and revision. I will explain this in detail after this. First phase, data familiarization. We just have to read the text many, many, many times to get familiar with it. It is important to immerse ourselves in the text. Then we can understand uh, the meanings that will emerge later for us. Next step, number two, data coding. Now, the coding phase depends on the orientation of the thematic analysis. I will come to that, but we first just need to understand what coding is. Coding is just giving labels to the topics and the subtopics we see in the text. Giving labels or giving codes. An example of a set of codes from a content analysis of newspaper articles on HPV vaccine are as follows. We have the general headline classification, vaccine label, HPV vaccine information, HPV and cervical cancer information, and potential issues and concerns. This comes from Hebel et al. 2009. So these are examples of codes, and we use it to analyze the data. Phase three, theme development and revision. This depends also on the orientation of the thematic analysis. But for now, you just need to understand that there are sub phases in the theme development and revision. It goes through three stages. The very initial stage is when we read through the text many times and certain initial themes start to come to our mind. Okay, these are only tentative themes. Then we have these themes in mind and we may write them down and we go through the transcripts again to see whether they describe what appears in each of the transcript. So this is the stage when we review the themes by checking it against the data. And this may go on and on a few times. And in the process, we define and name the themes so that we reach a finalized set of themes. And when, as we move towards that, we need to be sure of the scope of the theme because the themes cannot overlap with one another. They have to be mutually exclusive. 
Uh, this is the part where I talk about the two orientations in thematic analysis. The data familiarization stage is the same. That is the first stage where we read and reread the text until we are familiar with the meanings inside. Now, we could take an inductive orientation. This means that the coding and the theme development comes from the data itself, bottom up. The content of the data suggests to us the possible themes. We could take a deductive orientation in thematic analysis. Deductive orientation means that the coding and the theme development comes from an analysis framework, existing concepts or ideas, or a theory. You know, like the example I showed you just now for Hebel uh, et al. 2009 on the codes for content analysis of HPV articles in newspapers. Now, that is a deductive orientation. We go into the analysis with already five codes on what might appear in a news article on HPV. Now, just in case you are not too sure of the difference between inductive and deductive orientation in thematic analysis, I have to go back to the basic meaning of what is an inductive uh, reasoning in research. When we have inductive reasoning in research, we move from specific examples to reach a premise. For example, we have seen many swans and each one of them are white in color. So from our many observations of swans, we conclude that all swans are white. So we start with the very specific and move to the general. So in the case of thematic analysis, an inductive orientation means that the themes emerge from each of the texts we analyze and eventually we form tentative themes, which we will finalize later on. So it emerges from each of the texts we analyze. That is inductive orientation. As opposed to that, we have deductive orientation in thematic analysis. The deductive reasoning in research goes like this. It goes from a premise and we work out the specifics. One premise is all live mammals breathe. This cow is a live mammal, so this cow breathes. It moves from a premise, a general rule, and from that we deduce a specific detail. Now, in deductive orientation in thematic analysis, it means that we start with an analysis framework like Hebel et al. 2009, where we have the five kinds of information that could possibly appear in a news article of HPV vaccine. So we start with the analysis framework and we use it on each of the texts we analyze and we stick to that framework. This is the deductive orientation in thematic analysis. So I have talked a lot about this just now. So now I show it to you. Deductive orientation in thematic analysis. We start with an analysis framework and we stick to it. The final phase in thematic analysis is the writing up. Now this is where all the meanings come together, the patterns of meaning come together and we have to put it in such a way that it will capture all the patterns of meaning we have uh, obtained from the text. I have a way of doing it. I use a concept map because a concept map will show the relationship between the themes and the sub themes very clearly. And based on that concept map, I will do my writing up so that I can present the rich data to my readers so that they understand the meanings that come from this set of texts that I have analyzed. So in short, in the writing up phase, a researcher seeks to condense the raw data into a brief summary and show the links between now the results and the objective of the study. Do not forget that uh, we are doing this uh, thematic analysis because we have certain research questions or objectives of the study to guide us. We are interested in certain things and that's why we proceed with the thematic analysis. Now the results must come back to the uh, purpose of the study. We cannot forget that. This is an example of a, a concept map that shows the reasons for school choice. And uh, you can see here that there are some themes that have sub themes. So these are the themes that are more complex and talk about by more of the interview participants.
All right, this is what I have to tell you about the principles of thematic analysis. Watch my next video on the how-to of doing thematic analysis. Thank you.